Okay, a particle's moving along a curve whose equation is this big mess. Assume the x coordinate is increasing at a rate of six units. The x coordinate is increasing at a rate of six units per second when the particle is at the point one, two. At what rate of, is the y coordinate of the point changing at, an, at that instant? Is it rising or falling? Now, uh, we are supposed to be doing linear approximations, right? No. No? Is that, oh, that's 4, 3, isn't it? All right, so, huh? Okay, so we are doing, uh, oh, rate of change, right? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing related rates, my bad. So we're going to have to do, first of all, it tells me that the derivative of this is six units per second when the particle is at the point one, two. So if I go to one, two, we're talking about this particle is right here. And we want to know at what rate is the y point changing at that instant and is it falling? So this is going to be a calculator problem. Well, we can't solve for y. Well, maybe we can. Let's try it out here. Let's simplify this thing by doing a cross multiplication. So I would cross multiply and get 5x. Is that a y cubed? plus 5x is going to equal 9 plus 9y squared. So I am not going to be able to get rid of all the y's, but I think doing the derivative of this will be a little easier than the other one. So I'm, and you could do that, you could do quotient rule here and still get the derivative, but uh, we're going to do this derivative this way. So I got to do product rule here. Okay, so let's see. So we're going to do 5x is the first term times the derivative of the second term. And I'm going to put y prime instead of dy dx just to save space because I'm doing the derivative of y with respect to, to x. So I've got to put the y prime on there. Plus the second term, which is y cubed times the derivative of 5x is 5. And then plus the derivative of 5x is 5. Derivative of 9 is 0, and the derivative of 9y squared is 18y, y prime. So I'm going to get all my y prime stuff on this. Well, let's do it this way instead. We want to find the rate of change of y, so we're looking for y prime at the point 1, 2. So what I'm going to do now is I could solve for y prime, but it's easier to just plug 1 and 2 in for all those. So when I plug 1 in for 5x, for the x, I get 5. I plug 2 in right here, I get 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. Uh, plug in 2 in here is 8 times 5, that's 40. And then plus that 5 is 45. And then 18 times 2 would be 36y prime. So I'm going to have 60y prime over here. And then I'm going to subtract this 36y prime over. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 45 one, over to this side. And then 60 minus 36 is 24. 24y prime, which equals negative 45. So it looks like y prime is going to be negative 45 over 24. So the rate the rate of change at that end, the rate, the y coordinate is changing at that instant is going to be negative 45, 24 units per second. And it wants to know, oh my, you know what, I screwed up. I screwed up because this is with respect to time. Seconds is time. Okay, I did not see that till right now. So, where does it say that? Oh, right here. See this T? Or that seconds? That's your T. So we are actually, we're actually doing dx dt, and we are doing dy dt. And this thing right here tells me that dx dt, the rate of change in x is 6. So this is 6 units per second. This is what we're looking for, and we're looking for this when x is 1, and y is 2 because they're giving us that point. So when I do the derivative of this, i got to do this again. So it's first, let me erase all this stuff. So I screwed up 
because we're not doing the derivative with respect to x. We're doing it with respect to time. So I'm glad I caught that. All right, so when we do 5x derivative, that part's right, but over here, when we do the second, y cubed times the derivative of the first, it's five and then x prime or dx dt because I'm doing it with respect to t. So maybe I should write this as dy dt instead of y prime. You can do it either way. I'm gonna write this one as dx dt instead of the other one. And then when I do the derivative of 5x, this is 5 dx dt equals, and then this part's right. So now I'm going to still, I'm going to plug all these values in. 6 for dx dt, 1 for x, uh, 2 for y, and then solve for y, dy dt. So I got 5 times 1 uh, times 3 times y, 2 squared. And I got my dy dt. And I got plus 5 times 2 cubed. And then we got dx dt is 6 plus 5 times dx dt, which is 6. And then over here we got 18, and the y is 2. And we are looking for dy dt. I should have changed that to dy dt also. All right, so we're going to solve all this for dy dt. So let's see, that's going to be 12 times 5, so that is still 60 dy dt. Plus, over here we got 8 times 5 is 40 times 6. 40 times 6 would be 240. Uh, plus 30 is going to equal 36 dy dt. So again, 60 minus 36 gives me 24 dy dt on the left side. And then this is 270. I subtract 270 over to the right side. So dy dt is going to be two, negative 270 over 24. Now you can reduce that if you wish. We were given at the top that x is increasing at a rate of 6. So that means dx dt is 6 units per second. So dy dt is... Negative, 20, negative 270 units per second. And it wants to know, is it rising or falling? So since it's negative, it is falling. Okay, anybody else got any? Yep. 26. I wonder if I got enough before I got the whole thing on there, probably not. Is that the whole? No, that's not all of it. All right, let me move this down. I'll take another picture here. All right, so in this problem, we got a spotlight is on the ground 21 feet away. So we're going to call, we're going to call, uh, wait a minute, let's go ahead and get this. Away from a wall, so here's the wall, and the spotlight is way over here. There's the spotlight, and it says it's 21 feet away from that deal. And from a wall, and a six-foot man is walking toward the wall. So this guy is six feet tall right there. Uh, when he's walking toward the wall at a rate of two feet per second, so if I call this side X, that would be how far he's walking, so we would say dx dt, dx dt is equal to 2 feet per second. How fast is the height of the shadow changing? So we're going to call this the shadow over here, right? This is going to be my shadow, so I want to know we're looking for dy dt. Well, we want to know how fast is dy dt changing? When the man is six feet from the wall, so we want to know when there's when x x is going to be so when let's see if he's six feet from the wall and we're calling this x from the light over is x when he's six feet from the wall that's when twenty one 
minus six means that he would be, uh, what is that going to be? 15 feet from the wall. So when x is 15 feet. Why wouldn't it be angled? And the man is six feet from the wall. We're, gonna, we're calling the distance from the spotlight to the man as x. Okay? The distance from the spotlight to the person walking is x. So if he's six feet from the wall, this part's six feet. This part over here has to be 15 feet in order to meet a total of 21. You all follow with that? All right, so we're going to call, again, x is the distance he is. How fast is the height of the shadow changing? So we're looking for dy, dt. Now, we need to know how do the x and the y's relate to each other. Well, we're going to say that this angle over here is equal in this little triangle and this big triangle. And we're going to say this guy's standing straight up, so he's got right angles here. So this little triangle is similar to this big triangle. So what that means is the big shadow is to the distance he is from the light as, oops, which be, I'm sorry, the big shadow is y is to 21, or the whole distance y on the wall, this thing. That y is to 21, because that's the whole bottom part, as 6 is to x because the x is this distance. So you all see where that comes from? So cross multiplying, I'm going to get y times x is going to equal 21 times 6. I believe that's 126. And so I'm trying to find dy dt. So I've got to do product rule. So dy dt, uh, we're going to do product rule and do the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, going to equal the derivative of the other side. So now we want to find out, we got to plug everything in there and we're looking for dy dt. So we need to find xy and dx dt. Well, they gave us dx dt. This is two feet per second. And we need to find y and we got x, x is 15 feet. He's 15 feet from the light. And we're looking for dy dt be zero. Well, we can use this thing because we're looking for this when this is 15 right there. So we would take 126 over 15. That would be what y would be by plugging in, plugging in that 15 right here. 21 times 6 is the 126 divided by 15. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this thing. So let's see. Oh, you know, uh, So let's see, we got one of that two, that's one, or sorry, 252 over 15. And this is going to be plus 15 dy dt. Okay, I got a little problem here because, let's see, what do we got to do here? Walking away from the light would make x increasing, so that's positive. This should be getting bigger. Why am I getting a negative? So what are, what are you using this x? Say again? What, what's x representing? x is the distance from the light to the man. Okay. The light to the man. Like the wall. Well, Yeah, I was thinking that if x is 6. I thought x was 6 because it's going to be 6 feet away from the wall. Yeah, but I was doing x as the distance from the light to the man. He's 6 feet from the wall here, which makes him 15 feet from the light. Because we can't, we can't get a similar triangle. I guess we, oh, it would be shrinking, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be shrinking. We're right. Yeah, because six feet, he'd be here, so his light would actually be smaller, right? Yeah. So it would be decreasing because the further he gets, the closer he gets to the wall, the smaller the shadow. So this is right. So your dy dt is going to be 252 over 15 squared is 256, isn't it? Yeah. 
I'm going to get what y? Okay, so this is my given similar triangles, right? And we're looking for it when x is 15. So I take that 15 and I plug it in for the x because I need the y at that exact moment. So that y is 126 over 15. But doesn't that mean the triangles aren't similar anymore? No, they're still similar because now the shit, there's a triangle here, which is still the same as the triangle out here. No matter how far he walks, they're still going to be similar triangles by angle angle similarity. But that's this, so uh, the, the man's shadow is shrinking at 252 over 256 feet per second. And you can simplify that, do decimal, doesn't matter. Okay, then how fast is the angle of elevation changing? So now we're looking at this differently. The angle of elevation, I hope you all remember, is this angle right here. That's the angle of elevation. So we're going to call that theta. And we're going to do everything at the same time, but we want to know how this theta is changing. So again, this over here, his shadow is some y value. And this whole value is the distance the person, the guy is from the, from the uh, light. And we're still saying when he's six feet away, so that means when x is 15, so all this stuff is the same. The difference is we got to figure out how, excuse me, we got to figure out how theta relates to y and x. Does anybody know how theta relates to y and x from pre-cal? Yeah, it's opposite over adjacent, right? So now we are looking on this problem for d theta dt. That's what we're looking for. And we're still looking for it when x is 15. And so that means y is going to be the 126 over 15 still. Okay, so we're, we're supposed to know that tangent theta is going to equal y over x. And by the way, just so we know, I'm going to leave the answer from this one up here because we're going to need this answer. Because all three of these things are changing at the same time. That angle is changing as it gets further away. X is changing as it gets further away, and Y is changing. So I have to do the derivative of this. Yes. Oh, 15 squared. I can't multiply. My bad. 250, 225. Thank you. All right. So I got to do the derivative. Anybody know what the derivative tangent is? We got that. And then the derivative, we do quotient rule, bottom, derivative of the top, plus the top, derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. I said plus, that's wrong, y'all should have yelled at me, it's minus. So now I gotta find everything to plug into here except d theta dt. So I gotta find theta. Well, I hope we all know that this thing up here, if I do Pythagorean theorem, is x squared plus y squared. You take the square root of that. All right? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Which means secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So you all with me on where that came from? You don't know why what? Because I have to get a value to plug in for secant theta right here. Yes, this secant theta is going to be the same as this secant theta because I'm using this triangle that they gave us. And Pythagorean theorem says leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, right? So if I square root each side, the hypotenuse is this, which I wrote up here. 
because I have to have a numerical value for secant theta. I have to have a numerical value. So what this means is, in place of secant theta, I can plug this thing in. So this is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared all over x squared d theta dt. And that still equals this side over here. Now, I can take from that and I can plug in all of the values. So I know uh, x, x is 15 from right here. I know y is 126 over 15 from this thing. I know dx dt is this, and from the first problem, I know dy dt is this. So I gotta plug all of this stuff in and leave d theta dt as my variable. So this is a very hard problem. So you gotta plug all your x and y's in, your dx dy, dy dt, and solve that all out, and that'll be your solve for d theta dt right here, and that'll be your answer. Pretty hard problem. I use the same y that I figured it out because we're doing it when x is 15, so you use that same y from above. Because that y, we're finding it when he is six feet from the wall.